So publishing in academic journals, some helpful tips. Before I jump into talking about publishing processes in general, I wanted to talk briefly about our vision for quantitative, quantitative plant biology. We are very excited to have launched the journal in collaboration with the John Innes Centre. We believe that it meets a real need, providing a dedicated home for research that applies techniques such as data mining and analysis, mathematical modelling and machine learning to plant biology. It has a strong editorial team with Dr Olivier Hammond as editor-in-chief, 21 reputable associate editors with expertise spanning the journal scope, and Elliot Mayerowitz as advisory member. The journal is now open for submissions and we plan to publish our first papers this summer. The launch of the journal is part of Cambridge University Press's overall aim to branch into dynamic areas of research that harness the application of new technologies and methodologies to expand knowledge in fields such as plant biology. An important feature of our open access journal programme is to harness the opportunities that open science can bring to ensure greater credit and accountability into the process of publishing. An example is experimenting with practices such as open peer review. We're really excited to be launching a new journal which aims to set the stage for publishing quantitative plant research going forwards. This uh, gives an overview of the areas that I will be covering today. Uh, selecting a journal, writing and preparing your manuscript, peer review, publishing ethics, maximising your article's impact and becoming a reviewer. So this is aimed primarily at early career researchers or those who are new to the publish, publishing process, having published none or just a handful of papers previously. So first of all, selecting a journal. The top reason that editors give for an outright rejection of an article is that it is submitted to the wrong journal. Choosing the right journal for your research can seem daunting, but it doesn't need to be. By asking some simple questions, you can narrow your focus. When selecting a journal, it is important to consider who you want to, why you want to publish and who you want to publish for. It is important to understand the audience and message of the work. With this understanding of what you are trying to achieve, you can then start talking to your network and thinking about journals you commonly read. Do you want your work to be published in a general interest journal where it can reach a wide audience? Or will publishing in a niche interest journal be a more effective way for your research to reach a narrower audience? Do you want your work to be published in an international journal or is your research region specific? Do you want to contribute to a debate which has been ongoing in a particular journal? And do you want your article to be available open access? Thinking about the message you want to convey and who you want to convey it to will help you to shortlist some journals. Once you have shortlisted some journals, you can refine and make assessments in certain ways. First of all, it is important to say that impact factor is only one factor amongst many when selecting a journal. While it is probably the most recognised measure of journal impact globally, there are many other things you should be considering when selecting a journal. You need to make sure it is the right fit for your article by thinking about what the editor and reviewer are looking for. We strongly encourage authors to read the manuscript submission guidelines associated with their chosen journal as early as possible during the manuscript preparation process to ensure full understanding of the journal's audience and scope. This gives varied information on a journal's subject area coverage, accepted article types, manuscript style notes and special forms of submissions. As mentioned earlier, one of the most common reasons for rejection is that articles are not within the scope of a journal. Take the time to read recent publications in each journal. You don't have to read everything, but look through the issues and try to understand the types of articles that are being published. Ask yourself, is my paper related to others in the journal? And think about how significant your findings are to the understanding of your discipline. The more significant, the higher you can aim. Look at the hierarchy of journals in your field in relation to this. Do you think your paper is as good as the other papers in the journal? If not, then your chances of publication are reduced. You also need to think about what you are looking for. Are you happy with the journal's policy on peer review and open access? And does it allow you to comply with your funder's mandate? Next, we'll touch briefly on writing your manuscript. When writing your paper, it is important to remember the ABC of effective writing, accuracy, brevity and clarity. 
In terms of accuracy, um, it is important to have immaculate presentation and your article should only be submitted when fully complete. Read the information in the manuscript submission guidelines and ensure the paper is presented according to the journal requirements. You should check statements are referenced correctly and also check that your data is correct. It is also important to spend some time focusing on the correct use of grammar and spelling. If you are not a native English speaker, you could consider using a professional editor or translator. Many places also offer language editing services. In terms of brevity, when writing, get to the point. You should be able to express your argument in a single sentence. A longer manuscript is not necessarily a better one, as it may not have been well edited. In leading international journals, expression tends to be direct, with the writer stating the main point and then providing details. Overall, write simply. Do not try to impress readers with long complex sentences and complex vocabulary. Writing should be concise and readily understandable. And then there's clarity. Your paper will need to be well organised and clear to allow editors and peer reviewers to understand the paper well enough to evaluate the research. It is also important that you have a clear message to show that the paper is important to the target audience and that you structure your manuscript correctly. When preparing your paper for uh, publication, you stand a better chance of getting through the next stage if you write a meaningful and helpful title. Lengthy titles will not be read completely, but at the same time, don't make it too short. If you include too little information, no one will read further. Leave out unnecessary filler words, such as evidence of, effect of, a comparison of. And don't use a complete sentence, choose a descriptive phrase. The abstract should be clear and informative. It should explain what you've done, for example, the main issue or results addressed, the method used and what your conclusions are. Most abstracts have an upper limit on the number of words, for example, 150. Don't exceed it. And thirdly, choose appropriate keywords. Most journals require authors to select keywords or phrases in order to facilitate online searches. In some cases, editors may have an improved list of preferred terms, for example, the ones supplied by the journal or from some international standard. It is likely that your readers will search for terms that are commonly used in your field. To try and identify effective keywords, consider using Google Scholar or another engine to search for different terms and assess how relevant the keywords are. And what's next? Well, the next step is peer review, which allows your research to be evaluated and commented upon by independent experts, your peers, who work within the same academic field as you. Its aims are to ensure that your article is sound and accurate, give you detailed and constructive feedback on your work from experts in the field, alert you to any errors or gaps in literature you may have overlooked, and to create a discussion between the author, reviewers and editor around a research field or topic. Although the basis of peer review is the same across all journals, there are different types in existence. The most common of these are single blind peer review, where the reviewers are aware of the author's identities, but the authors are never informed of the reviewer's identities. Double blind, where neither author nor reviewer is aware of each other's identities. Open peer review, where authors and reviewers are aware of each other's identity. And this is the case for quantitative plant biology, where the reviewer's reports will be published alongside the papers. The type of peer review used by a journal should be clearly stated in the policy pages on the journal's website. When looking at the possible outcomes of peer review, it is very unlikely that a paper will be published in its original form. Revisions are nearly always asked for. The following represent the range of possible outcomes. There is except without any changes where the paper is published in its original form. There's except with minor revisions. So this is where the journal will publish the paper, but ask the author to make small corrections. There's except after major revisions, where the journal will publish the paper, provided the authors make the changes suggested by the reviewers or editors, or both. These changes could be, for example, structural issues that call for a significant reorganization of the text, or where existing analysis of data is flawed and needs to be reworked. There's revise and resubmit, where the journal is willing 
to reconsider the paper in another round of decision making after the authors make major changes. And then there's reject, where the journal will not publish a paper or reconsider it, even if the authors make major revisions. And then once the paper has been accepted, it will go through to copy editing. Um, next, going to look briefly at publishing ethics. So awareness of what constitutes unethical behaviour is vital when publishing in academic journals. The first and most important thing is to not submit to more than one journal at a time. Declare to your chosen journal that your manuscript is not submitted elsewhere. Avoid plagiarism or inadequate citing. Ensure that all the work in the journal, ensure that all the work in the submitted manuscript is original and acknowledge and cite content reproduced from other sources. You should also be aware of self-plagiarism. Confirm that you declare any conflicts of interest. A conflict of interest exists where an author, editor or reviewer has a financial or personal interest that could affect his or her objectivity or inappropriately influence his or her actions. Inform the journal if you subsequently find errors in your research. Show informed consent and provide assurances that participants' rights are protected. Explain how any research using animals is conducted responsibly and obtain permission to reproduce content such as images, maps, figures and musical examples. Quantitative plant biology is set to high ethics standards. We will be following all of the above, running all papers through Authenticate to check for plagiarism and openly publishing peer review reports and conflict of interest statements, so everything is transparent. So once your paper is published, the next thing to think about is how to maximise your article's impact. Here are some tips about to maximise the potential of your article to be seen, read and cited. You could add your article to your faculty or professional web page. Use social media to post a link to your paper and highlight key points. If your research is newsworthy, speak to your institution's press office. And if you are a blogger or have a personal web page, write about your article and link to it. Evidence has shown that author promotion of papers can be hugely beneficial in helping to increase usage and citations of papers. Next, um, going to touch upon briefly about becoming a, a reviewer. And the first step is how to get involved. Um, so although lots of people are happy to author, it can be very difficult to find people who have the time or willingness to review. Being a reviewer is a great way to get yourself known in the community and build your profile. It also helps you to build on and improve your own work as you can develop your paper writing skills. Um, there are some ways to get involved, uh, to write to journals you are interested in reviewing for. Join sites like Publons where you can track, verify and showcase your peer review and editorial contributions for academic journals and have a visible public profile through social media, departmental website pages, having an ORCID ID and attending conferences. And finally, I'm going to run through some top tips for, review for reviewers. Um, it's important to respond promptly to invitations to peer review. Submit your review on time. And if you don't have enough time to do the review in the timescale given, let the editor know as soon as possible. This way they can always approach alternative reviewers if necessary. Familiarise yourself with the journal's instructions for contributors. Show integrity. Keep contents of manuscripts confidential and let editors know if there is a conflict of interest. For example, if you have submitted similar research of your own. And be constructive. Your review should help the author improve the paper. Give detailed feedback and structure your comments by numbering them. It makes the editor's life a lot easier. You can also divide them into major and minor issues to help authors prioritise corrections. And I'll finish there. That was really helpful, Ali. Thank you very much. Other questions that have come in? Uh, yes, we have quite a few different questions for Ali. Um, so the first one we have is um, how many female editors are there on the editorial board? There are nine female editors. On the that's editorial nine board. out of 20, is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we feel that's 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 a really great balance to start with. 
um, which is really brilliant. And, and the board as a whole has a really good uh, geographical representation as well. Great, thanks, Ali. Um, the next question is, do you accept papers from BioArchive? Uh, yes, yes, we do. Um, yeah, so yeah, papers can come in from having been published in any preprint server. That's really useful. Thanks, Ali. Um, I think we've got one more. Um, what do you expect your first impact factor to be and why is this important to you? Oh, um, I mean, we would hope that the, the first impact would be um, in quarter two or above in the in the journal's relevant category uh, within Web of Science. So that would be the plant science category. Um, and then why we feel impact factor is important. Um, well, it's a, good, it's a good recognition of quality, um, but as I mentioned in, in the presentation, it, it obviously isn't the only, only measure of quality and there's obviously various other things that it's important to consider as well. Could I raise an issue in, in respect of um, the question that was asked to Ali about impact factor? That um, JIC and a growing number of institutions are signed up to DORA, which is the Direct Declaration of Research Assessment, which actually says that you don't judge the quality of a paper by the impact factor of the journal in which it's published. And there are all sorts of publishing tricks. I'm sure Cambridge University Press, Press wouldn't use any of these, but there are all sorts of publishing tricks that would uh, that would help raise the impact factor. And that's not that's not the major issue. It's what you have to say that's important, getting it out there. And there's a joint determination between JIC and CUP to to get the message out there. But um, but I don't think impact factor should be the be all and end all. And I, I think we're seeing a, a growing movement that, of course, it's some measure of, of quality of the journal. Of course it is. But there are tricks that are played by journals. And um, the intention is not to go down that route of increasing impact factor by uh, by using tricks. It's 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 we want to do good quality publications full stop. Is that does Ali, can you confirm that? Yes, I agree. That's exactly what what we want to do, and and we also follow uh, a part of Dora as well. So, um, we strongly believe in in that. So, so and Ali, I there's think... a further question that's come in for you. If you would okay. like to answer it, we've got a yeah, couple sure. of minutes left. Um, it's about formatting of papers, and if um, to submit to QPB, um, people need to reformat um, their papers. Um. So yes, so actually um, we decided um, to be flexible with um, with initial submissions. So um, so to submit to the journal um, initially, you don't need to have done things like format your reformat your referencing or adjust the length of your abstract. Um, we would just ask that you you make sure you adhere as closely as possible to the word, the word, the overall word limits of the paper. And then once the paper gets to a later stage in the process, and um, that will be the time when when you will expect the paper to reform be reformatted to uh, to the journal standards. So this should make initial submission a, a bit easier for everyone. <laughs>